Hi, I'm JD, and I wanted to do a tutorial for you today on organismic production techniques in Ableton Mod 11. Um, so, if you click on this video, I imagine you probably already have an inkling of like what organismic means in the context of music production, but essentially, I would define it as music that takes on a sort of lifelike character. Um, and there's many different ways to accomplish this. I believe these production techniques are probably best applied to IDM. Maybe if you want to like emulate Autechre, um, some or other artists with that are under that sort of discipline. Um, but you can apply some of these ideas to other electronic genres if you just want to add a little bit of dynamism. Most of what I'm using in this is stock in Ableton Live 11. Um, two things that I remember do not come with Ableton Mod 11 is the Euclidean Sequencer Pro and Coalescence by Dylan Basson, which I will link in the description for you. Uh, Dylan Basson makes incredible instruments and I use them all the time. Very unique. He's extremely talented both as a musician and as a programmer. So I'm going to break down the session for you a bit. And I am using a session view because I feel that the nonlinear production style of session view is good because these this jam session style of production is really conducive to chancing upon good ideas um, and is a little bit more dynamic than working in arrangement view, at least for me. And then you, what I normally do is I record all this into arrangement view and I might process it a bit more from there, um, cut out bits where I make a mistake, tweaking a parameter, something like that. Um, and that's how I'll export it. Uh, so these are the main drums here. This is using the Euclidean Synchrosur Pro again. And if you don't know about Euclidean rhythms, uh, I'm going to link a video in the description by somebody who is much more prepared to explain exactly how they work than I am. Um, I'm kind of math challenged. But what I do know for certain is they create um, interesting polymeters, or polyrhythms if you would like. Um, so you'll see here, it's just going in a circle and then triggering this kick sample um, from the Roland R8. And you'll see on this, I have this OTT that's being modulated by this wobbly LFO. And then being morphed a little bit more with this auto filter with a relatively quick uh, LFO on that, which creates this interesting fluttering sound that kind of hovers off of the LFO and then dissipates through this delay. Um, to add a, a bit of texture and then add a, just a touch of aggression to the kick. Uh, not too much, you just want to make it sound a bit odd, a bit punchy. And then I'll bring in the hi-hat here. I'll actually add more events within the sequencer. And uh, with these hi-hats, I'm modulating the pitch um, Yeah, at random, 12 times per bar. Uh, I'm doing this mostly because it creates a very dynamic feel, which uh, is really at the center of like organismic production. But this sort of pitch modulation uh, was something that the R8 was kind of renowned for uh, on sample. This pitch modulation on samples is what the R8 was renowned for. And this creates a sound that I feel is reminiscent of like 90s IBM, in particular Autech, or in particular their EP Anti. Um, not much going on with this hi hat. I like to use microfills a lot, um, and because that adds just a little bit more random, a little bit more dynamism these little tiny rhythms that the listener can latch on to if they know that's sort of an interesting little tidbit there. Um, I, I believe I have changed this a little bit from how it appears normally as a preset, but that's relatively standard. Please ignore this hideous EQ. Uh, this is a free denoiser plugin from Burton. Uh, I'll link that as well. Um, but this is just adding a little bit of a classy feel to the high end. Nothing too extreme there. Uh, a little bit of a drum sharpener as well to give it some added punch so it cuts through in the mix. And here I'm using the new plugin by Bastan called Convalescence. 
what she describes as a neural concatenative multi sampling. Uh, as I understand it, this is using a neural network powered by machine learning, as I think all neural networks are. Um, I could be wrong with that. To trigger granulated samples um, and do some effects processing. Um, I am generating a bit of this very abstract kind of mechanical texture um, that floats underneath the rest of the mix it makes it feel like we exist in this space or the song exists in the space um, like it takes up room versus where I feel some more mechanical electronic music really does sound like it comes from a machine like it's being played out of a computer this with organismic production I, I, I want to create the impression that this is very spatial uh, I'm doing a similar trick the auto filter you see I'm using microfills again here um, and then a lot of LFOs <laughs> and this kind of production style uses a lot of LFOs uh, I like to have it modulate rather slowly so like this is changing one bar every one, uh, every bar, every three bars, every two bars. Just changing parameters within co uh, convalescence, coalescence. Sorry. Uh, this is again controlled by Euclidean sequencer, and it sounds really cool. <laughs> it sounds really cool. It's an extremely unique texture, and I love using it. I think this would pair very nicely with some hybrid verb, because hybrid verb that kind of, or any kind of um, uh, Convolving reverb is good for creating the impression that something exists within a space more so than like some other reverbs because of course convolving reverb is really meant to emulate um, particular kinds of acoustic, particular acoustic characters that you'll hear in say like a cathedral in a small room it's more oriented towards that here I'm using another one of Boston's instruments tree tone and that is generating what he describes as rain. I'm not entirely sure exactly how tree tone works on like a mathematic or technical level, um, but I know it has something to do with fractals and that it's good at generating these beautiful little notes. And then I also have the noise um, here to create this sort of windy effect. Um, now the random nature of tree tone is really good for creating that sort of a dynamic natural feel um, and because this I believe is fully unquantized it's a little bit alien um, that's why I have it low in the mix because I want to cultivate a feeling of rhythm just an extremely dynamic rhythm I don't like to rely too much on like random melodies I don't think they usually create very interesting sounds um, this is a kind of Kind of like an arpeggio that is uh, using again you'll see Euclidean sequencer pro <laughs> uh, this is in B minor and I believe this should just be working oh, there you go this is a very simple uh, wavetable patch uh, I like using wavetable a lot for plucks like these um, this is a little bit random I believe uh, yes, the rotation on this is being modulated by an LFO. And then we have um, an echo that is having its character modulated by this relatively quick LFO. Actually, I'm going to lock that into... There we go. Good. That synced properly. I do like to sync things up with these LFOs. I don't really like to just go off of Hertz. Um, because I still want to cultivate a feeling of rhythm um, I just want that rhythm of course you know to be very dynamic so we'll have that incorporated so here we have that nice very technological texture kind of floating beneath things and I'll bring in I'll bring in some claps very nice so you can already hear it's starting to come together Let's go ahead and integrate this pluck. This pluck is really not anything that special, I believe. 
but something like this, something that's more repetitive, I feel can kind of ground a track like this that has some random elements. Um, you can do things that are like more soundscape-ish, that are not really quantized at all, and just sort of float around. Um, but I'm still trying to create like a very noticeable progression here. And something that's done kind of subtly like this can be very nice. These are some rather dubby chords. This is G, G flat minor, as you can see there. Um, kind of reminiscent of like some of the basic channel stuff. But yeah, uh, really nice. And then you have this delay that is letting in just just a little bit of the pluck. Just a little bit. And then this filter is modulated with this LFO. And that's nice. That creates this really lovely, very atmospheric rhythm. Let's actually bring this down a bit. Emphasize this pluck. Bring the drums up. Tree tone up a bit more so we get some of those noisy, windy textures and those floating notes. Make it feel a bit more like a soundscape. And then, what you can do, and what I really like to do, is even if you have uh, some very dynamic progressions like these, you can um, add in some more traditional drums. Now, this is also the Roland RA, but this is uh, programmed normally in MIDI, or in the, in the traditional way in MIDI. The microfills here again, um, just a little bit of hybrid mode. And that's nice because now you can hear that those Euclidean drones are playing off of those hi-hats that I guess are very reminiscent of like trap. This weird clav groove, I think it's very cool. Um, now we can make it a bit techno. We bring in this very simple kick. Just pump that up a bit. Let's bring those trap hi hats back. Let's do actually a, a less intrusive hat. Maybe some weirder kicks, or well, not weird, but just not so present. up an octave. That is nice. So you can hear this is very atmospheric, very dynamic. The little touches are random. The, the parameter and the Euclidean sequencer, or the parametric nature, not sure if I'm using that right, of the Euclidean sequencer kind of gives the impression of soundscape. But at the same time, it's playing off these more conventional rhythms, giving it life and color. Very atmospheric, very cool. It's very, like, stereotypically ideal, <laughs> I think, if that's what you're interested in. Okay, and that's all. Uh, thank you for watching. If you have any requests for what you'd like me to cover or any feedback on this video, I would very much appreciate it.